Hello, good morning. Andrea here with Dental Well Tutory. Let's do some study tips, study help on dental ethics. So let's talk about ethics. What is it and what basically do you have to know? So ethics as a dental professional basically means we have a moral conduct. So we need to know the difference between right or wrong. And if there's ever any confusion, well, we have to just really refer back to our code of ethics. And we do have categories. We have codes. We have principles, which is what I'm going to talk to you guys in a little bit. Basically, as a general rule, you have to think that we have standards. And there are you know, minimum, minimal standards by law that we have to follow. As an example, we can't be using dirty instruments on a patient. I mean, that's a horrible example. We never would, but those are minimum standards, okay? And then we have to think about things like, oh, are we going to bill somebody who has insurance more than if somebody who doesn't have insurance? All of that refers to code of ethics. We might be wanting to try to help out somebody who doesn't have insurance, but is that the standard of code of ethics? No. So let's talk about that a little bit. So you do have to know certain principles for our code of ethics. You have sources, you have principles, you have categories. Some basic principles are things like autonomy. That basically means your patient people have a choice to do what they want. They have that autonomy, meaning if they don't want x-rays taken, they have that prerogative to say no. And we need to, they have to be, or sorry, we have to be okay with that. But it's in our code of ethics to make sure they understand why radiographs are so important, but they're allowed to say no. So do you see how that can kind of overlap a little bit? And then there's another one, do no harm. That's non-maleficent. So basically not doing harm. We have to be a professional at all times, not causing harm, not something as simple as not using dirty instruments, but things like we always need to think about the best interest of the patient, even if the patient thinks otherwise. A really good example might be somebody comes in with severe gum disease, they need teeth taken out, they have an abscess, there's an infection traveling through their body, but they want teeth whitening. They insist on teeth whitening, they don't care about the other stuff. Our code of ethics is we cannot do harm. Us performing teeth whitening and ignoring the other stuff is not within our code of ethics. Um, the patient is yelling at us. They're getting upset because we're not doing teeth whitening. Well, we need to tell them we have a code of ethics. Us just simply doing the teeth whitening for you. Of course, we want your money, but we're thinking about you first. We cannot do that. We can do the teeth, um, the teeth whitening right after we fix that infection, but we need to take care of that first. So that's do no harm. And then promotion of well-being. This refers to uh, beneficence. That's always hard for me to say. Beneficence, am I even saying that properly? Please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. <laughs> You're all probably laughing. So basically we need to promote well-being, meaning we need to volunteer our time. That's one way of doing that. Um, just by simply not, ca not causing harm to a patient, we want to do so much more than that. We want to help others. We want to do whatever we can as a clinician and in our community. So we want to be the best dental professional we can to our patients, but let's take it a step further and promote well-being by volunteering. So that's what that means. Um, justice is another thing. So we need to treat people fairly. We need to give them what they deserve. Um, a fine line of this could be even if your patient comes in, they're extremely rude, they're having a tough time, we need to remember we need to treat people fairly. So they might be super rude because they're very fearful, they're very anxious of their dental appointment today. We still need to treat them with respect and keep that in mind. They're probably just extremely fearful. Of course, that can only go so far if the patient becomes you know, they're going crazy, yelling, screaming, they might be borderline abusive. Well, that's when we have to nip that in the bud. But if they're just simply being rude, I mean, not simply, but if they're saying things you don't agree with, they're being rude, we need to remember that they're probably just extremely nervous. They still deserve the same amount of care as somebody who isn't nervous and is being super nice. I know it sounds funny, but that's part of our code of ethics. 
The next one I want to talk to you about is, is uh, veracity. Veracity. So this involves telling the truth. We need to tell the truth. And this could result in, we need to tell the patient what's true about their condition. We can't just simply say, yeah, you have severe gum disease, but don't worry about it. Just come in every three months for your cleaning. We need to tell the truth. We need to explain gum disease to them by showing pictures, showing them the x-rays, explaining things to them over and over until they understand. So they're not just simply sweeping it under the rug. Um, that we have to tell them the truth, even if let's say they don't want to hear it. I, I, I do have patients come to me and say, you know what? I know my teeth are bad. I know they're horrible. I don't want to hear it. I'm just here. Clean my teeth. That doesn't really happen to me in my own practice now as a mobile dental hygienist, but that used to happen to me in the dental office all the time. I feel like it was because the front desk was kind of like badgering them to come in to get their teeth cleaned and they got sick of it. I don't know, maybe, but I, I'm still legally and I need to, as part of my code of ethics, I can't just sweep things under the rug. I have to tell them what's going on. Another thing when it comes to telling the truth, and I've said this before, probably in previous um, study uh, sessions, is for kids. We need to tell kids the truth. We cannot say to them that something's not going to hurt when, let's say, we're giving them a needle and we know it's going to hurt. We shouldn't lie to them. Maybe just don't mention anything about hurting. That's what I prefer. That's my philosophy is I'm just not going to mention it. If a child asks me, I'm going to be honest with them, but I'm also not going to go crazy and say, oh my God, it's going to hurt so bad. I might say something like you're going to feel a pinch or something like that. Thankfully, in my own practice now, I don't have to give needles because that was always hard for me to have to explain to a little one about the needles coming. So I'm glad that I don't have to do that. Another part of our code of ethics is confidentiality. This is a principle that we have. We need to keep our clients information confidential. I feel like that's one of the easiest things to do because who am I going to talk to about my client? I'm not going to go home and tell everybody I know about that client. I'm not going to tell my next client about the client I saw before. It just doesn't happen. Um, in any healthcare professionals, things need to be confidential. But then we also talk, we need to talk about privacy, the health information, portability and accountability act, HIPAA. That is privacy. So we need to keep everything private. We need to safely secure their chart so that not just anybody can see it. Um, their health information is private, that kind of thing. So those are the principles, okay? If you guys want to learn more, absolutely comment below, ask me any questions, and I look forward to talking to you guys in the next one.